1795, Francis Asbury, a circuit-riding Methodist preacher, helped to usher in the Second Great Awakening. Soon, every church was holding prayer meetings. The revival broke out first in Connecticut and began to spread like wildfire. The Second Great Awakening lasted over 40 years, and out of it came the whole missionary movement, missionary societies, and the abolition of slavery issue. During this period, 600 colleges were founded in the Middle West. During the same period, Asbury spread Methodist camp meeting Christianity from Georgia to Maine and inland to the frontier areas of Indiana. Asbury never married and he had no home. He carried all he owned and the two saddlebags on his horse. He preached well over 16,000 sermons, ordained more than 4,000 preachers, traveled on horseback or by carriage over 270,000 miles, and wore out three faithful horses. Before his death, Asbury had become one of the best known preachers in America. The duration of the Second Great Awakening was remarkable. In 1825, a young lawyer by the name of Charles Finney made a faith commitment, and within 24 hours, he met with 24 others, all of whom became Christians. Finney gave up his law practice and committed himself to telling others about his faith. He launched into evangelism and recruited a man by the name of Nash, who made prayer his sole and all-consuming role. When Finney preached, Nash remained behind him and prayed. Thousands responded. In Boston, 50,000 made faith commitments in just one week. There's no doubt that the Second Great Awakening energized the anti-slavery crusade, the women's rights movement, prison reform, the temperance movement, and probably a good deal more. But it also led to the necessity of a third awakening. Many of our founding fathers believed that involuntary slavery was an evil institution. During the Constitutional Convention, a Christian statesman by the name of George Mason addressed the issue. Every master of slaves is born a petty tyrant. They bring the judgment of heaven upon a country. As nations cannot be rewarded or punished in the next world, they must be in this one. By an inevitable chain of causes and effects, Providence punishes national sins by national calamities. By 1834, many clergy had entered the anti-slavery movement, speaking out against this great national sin. The battle of states' rights versus slavery had begun. The Third Great Awakening to impact America occurred in the late 1850s, and its focus was not on preaching, but on prayer. It all began in 1857, when Jeremiah Lanfear began a prayer meeting in the North Dutch Reformed Church in Manhattan. Even though the meeting was widely advertised, only six people out of a million showed up. But the following week, there were 14, and the week after that, 23. By February 1858, every church and public building in downtown New York was filled with praying Christians. Then people began to dedicate their lives to Christ at a rate of 10,000 a week in New York City alone. The movement spread, and in cities across America, thousands came together to pray, often on a daily basis. In one year, more than one million people made faith commitments during those Christ-centered prayer meetings. The effect was felt for over 40 years. God was preparing the people for a great trial to come that would ultimately be resolved by a bloody civil war. Evangelism was alive and well after the Civil War. God was still using his lawyer servant Charles Finney, but he added a few others to his arsenal. For example, Dwight L. Moody, a highly successful shoe salesman turned evangelist during the Civil War. He became a well-known Chicago-based Bible teacher. By the time of his death, his audiences totaled in the tens of millions. He founded the still famous Moody Bible Institute. One of the great symbolic achievements of this Christian movement was the imprinting of our coins with the words, In God We Trust. <laughs>